in project EU for energy uh, transition covenant of MES in Western Balkans and Turkey project workshop dedicated for resilient climate cities, Turkish municipalities. Uh, shortly, I would like to present myself. I will be moderator of the first section of this um, workshop. Uh, I am Daiva Matonene. I am from Lithuania. I am representative of Central Project Management Agency and project team leader in Turkey. And for opening of the workshop, I would like to kindly invite uh, Mrs. Lydia Kasupiene. Director of Central Project Management Agency. Dear Lydia, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Distinguished participants of this workshop, it's my pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on the Marmar Urban Forum, organized by Marmar Municipalities Union, and particularly on this workshop organized by Central Project Management Agency. As it was presented, I'm Lydia Koshubirnia. I'm the director of Central Project Management Agency based in Lithuania. With experience of more than 15 years in administrating and managing the implementation of programs and projects funded by the European Union and other international donors, the Central Project Management Agency stands for an effective and transparent cooperation and trustful partnership. It is specially assessed public institutions whose founder is the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Lithuania. Our agency is implementing and managing EU and bilateral projects and programs in partner countries in such areas as social affairs, transport, environment, energy, climate change, and many others. Climate change area is currently in a front page due to the global situation. Therefore, I'm personally very happy and pleased to hear that MAMA Urban Forum tries to find a way for discussion in collaboration with stakeholders at different levels. I would like to express a great appreciation to all the participants of this workshop for your attendance and interest in such a pertinent subject and to emphasize the importance of the projects focused on climate change mitigation. As you may be aware, 2019, according to the United Nations, was the second warmest year on the report. And the end of the warmest decade, 2010-2019, recorded. Taking into consideration this crucial fact, we must understand that climate change is affecting every country on the every continent and each inhabitant of each city in the world. Therefore, Lithuania at its national level is taking relevant measures to combat climate change. Whereas at the local level in Lithuania, around 17 municipalities are the signatories of EU covenant of mayors for climate and energy initiative, which brings together thousands of local governments voluntarily committed to implementing EU climate and energy objectives. Following call stated above, I am delighted to let you know that from the 1st of March 2021, Central Project Management Agency, together with partner GAZ, started implementing the EU-funded project EU for energy transition Covenant of mayors in the Western Balkans and Turkey. CPMA is responsible for the successful project implementation in Turkey region. The overall object, objective of the project is to deliver of the energy transition and tackle climate change, while the specific one is to support the Covenant of Mayor cities of the Western Balkans and Turkey in delivering convert ledges under the energy and climate target. The focus is on municipalities for achievement of government of mayors goal, providing advisory services, technical and capacity support to the selected municipalities in the Western Balkans and Turkey in the development and implementation of their source, sustainable energy and climate action plans. I would like also to take the opportunity to thank for valuable contribution within the project to our stakeholders. 
Embassy of the Republic of Lithuania, representatives from Association of Local Authorities in Lithuania, Global Covenant of Mayors, Turkish and Lithuanian municipalities, as well as representatives of Turkish universities. So not to take too long, as the main aim of the forum is to have debates on how to make cities more sustainable, resilient and healthy, I would like to add that I'm truly happy that our workshop is bringing together Turkish and Lithuanian professionals to, ha to have a great dialogue within this brief but exclusively important workshop. I encourage you to respond to have constructive talks and to seek solutions by sharing the good practices and approaches. Have a good and productive workshop. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, dear Lydia. It is really inspiring uh, opening speech. We are so happy that uh, we are together with you today. And also, I would like to announce that we are very happy today to have a representative from Lithuanian Embassy to Turkey. I would like to mention that our project established close partnership and co collaboration with Embassy and Deputy Head of Mission Councilor, Embassy of the Republic of Lithuania to the Republic of Turkey, to Islamic Republic of Iran, to Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Mrs. Vaida Stankavicene today participating, and the Vaida, floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, dear Daiva, uh, dear mayors, representatives of Turkish and Lithuanian municipalities, representatives of Central Project Management Agency of Lithuania, experts of environment and other participants. On behalf of Embassy of Lithuania in Ankara, I would like to extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for participating in the workshop of Marmara Urban Forum, forum focused on energy transition uh, for climate resilient cities. I'm glad that uh, uh, here yani, uh, our project, uh, project uh, which is implemented by the Central, Central Project Management Agency uh, is involved in this workshop. Uh, nowadays, everybody can see how climate change affects all countries with higher temperatures, floods, forest fires, storms, and other disasters. Due to disruptive uh, consequences on social, economical, and even political life of societies, discussions about climate change uh, solutions have sparked at the global level and we see in our countries. We could observe more visible engagement and actions of our people in Lithuania and Turkey. Recently, we had welcoming news about the political will of Turkey to ratify the Paris Climate Agreement to reduce emissions of the greenhouse gases that caused global warming. In addition, I am glad to notice that activities of Turkish municipalities uh, also increased uh, the ambition of National Climate Pledge. Today's forum shows the wide interest of Turkish society to do more in order to adapt to an inevitable changes. Lithuania and Turkey have long-lasting friendly ties in various areas. This year, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of restoration of bilateral relations between our countries. And our common attitude to energy transition, development and implementation of sustainable energy and climate plans for municipalities are additional possibility to work together and achieve more visible results. We are proud uh, that Lithuanian agency responsible for development cooperation win the project funded by you and implemented it in Istanbul. The project will further develop mutual beneficial and efficient partnership between uh, our countries. I am sure that new initiatives of friendship uh, among our nations will be develop developed in the future. This workshop is excellent example of possible cooperation between municipalities uh, having the same commitments to take actions tackling climate change and supporting the energy transition. 
I would like to welcome Lithuanian and Turkish partners uh, from, municip from municipalities committed to long-term vision to combat climate change. I wish for fruitful discussions about actions needed to ensure smooth energy transitions and expect that shared experience experience how similar challenges can be addressed will lead to the establishment of more uh, friendly climate environment in cities of Turkey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is a huge pleasure, Vaida, to have you today here. And I believe that our good start will be very productive. And in the beginning, we will have more closer work together. And before going to the third um, uh, speaker, I would like uh, to quote one um, sentence from Keller, that alone we can do so little and together we can do so much. And I am very happy that today in our workshop participating, Mrs. Bukre Turkskoy, she is representative from United States and local governments, Middle East and West Asia section. She is the contact point in Istanbul for Global Covenant of Mayors. Thanks a lot, Bukre, for our possibilities to participate today, and I give time to you. Thank you very much, Laiva. Uh... E, bundan sonra Türkçe olarak devam edeceğim. E, son İngilizce olacak. E, öncelikle kurum hakkında birkaç... I'm going to move on in Turkish. Let me just talk about my institution a bit. Uh, UCL Geneva focuses on uh, the new uh, urban agenda and sustainable development. So it's a, a local network, basically, a network of local administrations. We have six committees, and one of them is Environment Committee. and. Uh, in line with them, uh, we are uh, providing support to them uh, in Turkey. Let me talk about what is GCOM. It is basically a global covenant of mayors for climate and energy, uh, briefly GCOM. Uh, we promote local activities uh, against uh, climate change. It's basically an alliance of cities, and GCON has about uh, 27 signatories in Turkey, Istanbul uh, Metropolitan Municipality, Bursa Metropolitan Municipality. They are parts of uh, this group. They are signatories to that. We have many district uh, signatories as well. So. GCOM has about 13 local and national subunits. The regional activities are coming to the fore. We have 14 help desks providing support to signatory cities, and we are a part of that. So why should the local governments should attend, should participate in GCON? First of all, you can have a voice as a local administration um, because you can have your voice in pa agreements like Paris agreements, uh, uh, like large international agreements. And about climate change, you can attend different activities and you can use resources. Uh, and as it is, as it has more than 10,000 signatories, Joining in this network uh, would help them find funds for their activities as well. Other than that, we have three basic uh, initiatives, uh, Innovate for Cities, Invest for Cities, and Data for Cities. I Innovate for Cities, well, it is in the innovation, uh, it focuses on innovation regarding the climate change and Invest for Cities. Uh, it focuses on finding funds. Um, it basically uh, provides innovative financial solutions. Data for cities is about reporting. So this is another initiative that focuses on uh, data gathering and reporting. So we have climate, City Climate Finance Gap Fund. Currently, this fund is dedicated to implementation of the existing project. It's basically a capacity building fund. 
and it is uh, you can always apply to this fund i'm going to be sharing this in the chat box by the way so how do you how do you how do you apply to gcom you know the signatories basically undertake they promise that uh, they promise to create an inventory of greenhouse gases and they uh, provide an assessment uh, of climate risks. They have emission uh, reducing targets and they follow to measure and monitor them. I can skip that part. How can you be a signatory? You can contact me, for example. Uh, I represent UCLG. Uh, there is a uh, there is a relevant document. I can send you the document, uh, and uh, afterwards, within th three years, you're going to have to create an emission inventory and risk assessment. And after that, you have to identify reduction targets, and then you're going to have to create a climate change action plan. Uh, and after completing that. You should do reporting and monitoring uh, biannually. It could be uh, via platform of My Covenant, or it could be via CDP and ICLEI's Unified Reporting System. After doing the reports, GCOM analyzes, and if in mitigation, adaptation, and access to energy, if you have improvements uh, in these areas, you are going to be given a badge. I'd like to talk about two important uh, campaigns that we have, Race to Zero and Race to Resilience. Uh, they're both global campaigns and they have uh, like urban legs right now. And uh, as in, in November, uh, there's going to be a UN conference on uh, climate change, uh, which aims at accelerating the activities until 2050, net zero carbon uh, emission is being targeted, and both uh, campaigns uh, are in the scope of this campaign. So Race to Zero and Race to Resilience, they work with local governments, and uh, they want to mobilize uh, local governments. In the chat box, I'm going to be sharing information. If you want to join in, uh, please to join. I hope I didn't exceed my time. Thank you very much. And uh, if uh, uh, you have any questions, dear participants, you can write in the chat. Uh, and thanks, Bukrevat. You will send some links that it could be valuable for all participants to to have more time uh, to to go through and to read more in detail. And uh, now I would like uh, to do a short presentation about our project. And after that will be a very interesting part of our workshop. It is interactive di discussion, which will be provided by Professor Tan Tanay Bey. So shortly about about the project you for energy transition, uh, covenant of Mias in the Western Balkans and Turkey. And before going deeper uh, to the presentation uh, about the content, uh, first of all, I would like to pay your attention about two main challenges that facing uh, uh, we facing in all the world. And the interesting view that pandemic situation, COVID-19, accelerated the rise of smart cities. Uh, was done research with uh, 167 cities in all the world and uh, was identified that for 65 percentage of cities, the biggest lesson learned during the pandemic 
with just crucial smart and sustainable city programs which is very important to the future. This was particularly critical lesson for citizens in the Middle East, 80%, and Europe, 68%. And 43% cities learned with importance, operational continuity and agility. And about the same percentage realized the merit of time, access of data and analytics. And very important to you that majority of city identify collaboration between public and private sectors is very important. And uh, here was announced by a, a commissioner of Agenda 2030 that challenges we faced with the pandemic, the need for good health system, good education system, and more resilience and sustainable eco economy. And going to the biggest issue that we have now in all the world, uh, it is showing by scientists and by NASA, according NASA analysis, 2020 was the warmest year on the record. And the temperature is growing now and 2020, uh, in 2021 of August, Yev just had the sixth hottest August in the record. And if we see by temperature anom anomaly, also we can see a huge trend. Not only trends, but also concrete uh, nature uh, is going on the diverse. And in Paris event, was announced when 1 million species of animals and plants are now threatened with extension more than ever before in human history. And warmings are becoming more and more alarming in various parts of the world. And summarizing 57 scientific articles, it is assumed that the effects of climate change go beyond natural variability in 22 percentage of areas where fires can occur in near future. And Turkey is highly vulnerable to climate change as part of the southern belt of Mediterranean Europe. The country is already facing increased temperature and decreased perception trends. And now, why is so important to act now? Uh, many uh, different programs going on, like European Green Deal, uh, also China announced until 2060 to reach a uh, carbon neutral view, and uh, many financial programs from European Investment Bank, EBRD, and other financial donors going to sustainable and economic development. And um, also important mentioned that if we see by prices about renewable energy resources five or six years ago, we will see another view. And today it is by economic point is valuable, valuable uh, developments. And we are very happy to work with the cities, the biggest cities like Istanbul and others because we are biggest players in this area. And going deeper to our project, EU for Energy Transition and Covenant of MIAS, I would like to announce that this project is a multi-donor project that is jointly co-financed by the European Union and German Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development and implemented by Central Project Management Agency in Turkey and GAZ in six Western Balkan countries. This project will tackle climate change and support the energy transition in Western Balkans and Turkey through increased uptake the covenant of mayors for climate and energy initiative in the region and support municipalities to translate their ambitions to reduce green gas, gas emissions. And uh, shortly about Central Project Management Agency, Director uh, Lydia Kasubiene uh, said opening speech and announced, I also would like to pay attention, that is uh, 
public institution, uh, really valuable institution, which established from 1996 uh, by Ministry of Finance, and now is working very active in main direct directions as a project management, managing different various EU finance projects and AVA in Lithuania. Also, uh, Central Project Management Agency is public uh, for public-private partnership is competence center and the support to reach public and private uh, investors and development co cooperation that is really very important for us. And if we see by figures, indeed, as the huge amounts is going from different donors and working with Norway Fund CEO and um, other financial programs. And also, I would like to mention that uh, uh, now Central Project Management Agency is co-presidency of the practitioners, practitioners Network for European Development Cooperation together with GAZ. It is big initiative, uh, cover 21 uh, members countries and Central Project Management um, Agency doing great job. And uh, uh, for project, uh, Central Project Management Agency for this project in Turkey have two main offices. The, the, uh, the one office established in Turkey, in Istanbul, uh, who will support to implement project uh, by content point of view and by administration point of view. Another office we have in Central Project Management Agency, we will support by administration, administrative and legal legal um, efforts. Going to the, uh, to the main uh, goal for the project is to deliver the energy transition to tackle climate change in Western Balkans and Turkey, and specific objective, support global covenant of mere cities in Western Balkans and Turkey in delivering of their plunges under the energy and climate targets. And the starting point of a project is Covenant of MIAS initiative and sustainable energy climate action plans uh, during this uh, project will be developed. I not would like to pay many attention about how many Covenant of MIAS reach uh, in Turkish municipalities because I see that I need to save time. And all they would like to say that uh, for this project is selected two main municipalities in Turkey. It is. Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality and Basilar District Municipality, and I'm very happy that they are participating today here. And during this project, we will support, implement smart, smart cities approach, going to clear energy, protecting nature, and going to revising CO2 reduction and emissions by Baisland Emission Inventory. And at the end of the presentation, I would like to pay attention that indeed we have close partnership and collaboration with different um, stakeholders, like you see Energy Cities, Joint Research Center, Global Covenant of Mayors, and also main associations, Marmara and Turkish Municipalities Association. But we are very happy to work together. So, and at the end of my presentation, I would like to say Henry Ford uh, quote that coming together is beginning, keeping together is progress and working together is success. And I hope that together with you, we will have successful and really valuable project in climate actions. Thanks a lot for your attention. And I very would like uh, to give the floor now to Professor Tanai Bey, and uh, but we will have enough time for discussion and uh, for interactive discussion in this workshop. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Taiwa. <clears throat> now, uh, in this part of our uh, workshop, uh, first we will hear about the uh, Lithuanian experience. Then uh, we will uh, get the uh, information and uh, approaches of the Turkish municipality, targeted municipalities, to prepare the sustainable energy climate action plan. So first, um, um, I would like to give the floor um, to uh, 
our friend Minga, Mindaguas Sinkebius, if I'm correctly pronouncing, and his, uh, the Ala president and mayor of Genoa. So he will uh, talk about the experience uh, in uh, Lithuania, uh, the benefits and challenges um, and partnership between uh, uh, Lithuania and Turkey, and um, also set up a uh, plan preparation process, their experience and some key recommendations. You have about uh, seven to eight minutes. If you use seven minutes, Davidas will use eight minutes. The floor is yours. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Every participant of Marmara Urban Forum. Hopefully, you hear me well, and the translation okay. translation is also working well. I will now uh, switch to my presentation. Okay. So uh, briefly, I would say that I'm a, as I already introduced, I'm a uh, president of Association of Local Authorities in Lithuania. What does it actually mean? So uh, we have all in all 60 municipalities present in the uh, Republic of Lithuania. And association is a, an umbrella organization that unites all the 60 municipalities. And uh, we as association, I am as a president, we, we tend to represent uh, the common interest of these, these 60 municipalities, both at, at local authorities, central government, and of course, international. Internationally, also, I'm uh, one of the mayors of, uh, of the municipalities, Yonova district municipality, particularly, and also I'm a member of European Committee of Regions. And next to it all, I'm also appointed as an uh, ambassador or as uh, on the covenant of mayors. So now, briefly, uh, I think that the take the main takeaway uh, that was many times already said is that we do understand that uh, uh, that climate change is uh, currently a priority. In, uh, in the Green Deal uh, is an ambitious plan, I think, with ambitious goals to reach by 2050. So we need to, as a region, as a Europe, become climate neutral and to promote green economy, green investment and innovation. So when it comes to reality, so we really do face uh, big challenges in, in spheres of various spheres and sectors in um, energy sector and transportation sector and biodiversity in agriculture in circular economy so that really touches uh, this global uh, green deal or uh, climate change priority it really touches upon upon our usual uh, living standards usual living uh, uh, living uh, pathways so uh, and um, what I can say is, of course, when we talk about uh, uh, various goals or initiatives, actually, Green Deal is maybe also a, a good uh, example of that. We talk from the European perspective, national perspective, and regional or municipality perspective. So I think that it's not a top-bottom approach. I have to. I, I think that we all have to unite and to in order to seek. Um, uh, mutual understanding and then uh, after that we of course can easier uh, run to you and, uh, and and and uh, develop and work on those goals that are set if we exclude some of, of, of the parties like regions or municipalities then most probably the plan will not be so successfully introduced and implemented as it could be moving on I think that, uh, as already uh, said, uh, there are local authorities. We we do have in Lithuania so-called principle a uh, whip. So you have to punish someone, or you can give a carrot as meaning as a motivator. So there's two kind of approaches. Either you punish someone for not doing something, or are you, either you're putting a carrot and someone is eager to do something. It doesn't matter. You have to be a carrot. It can be some dessert or cake. So uh, in this sense, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a really great, uh, I think, initiative, Covenant of Mayors. So that's not a, either a punishment, either a motivation. It's a voluntary thing. So we have 60 municipalities, all in all in Lithuania. 
but 16, not 60, 60 we have, but 16 have decided to join the Covenant of Mirrors. And also I'm one of them for various purposes. I think we're very, the, the main purpose is the common understanding that we really have to do something about it, not to wait for central government for us to give orders, not to, uh, not to uh, wait for central government or European Union to give money, we have to do something about it ourselves. So these are uh, municipalities, my colleagues uh, with different population, different uh, joining uh, uh, initiative date uh, that really um, put an effort and believe in, in uh, and have a common understanding. But that's also the municipality's responsibility to take some part in the in the in how we are uh, planning to live and, and work uh, in the future. So now talking about the Yonava, the district municipality that I know best, it's, it's a really industrial type municipality. We joined the Covenant of Mayors in 2016. And what do we actually do? Like we're on the ground. We're really not talking big gold, big strategies and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, big documents and so on and so on. But what we're doing on the ground is what we're doing. We have a transportation uh, company owned by the municipality, meaning that buses that are working around the city, we make them electrified. We have centralized heating with a lot of uh, flat houses. We renovate them not to use too much of the energy for heating while the summer, not uh, during the winter, I'm sorry, because we have harsh, still harsh winters despite the ongoing global warming. So uh, what we also have is that we we try to implement various projects. For for instance, we have thousands of uh, lighting lightning uh, road lightning uh, bulbs or install or system of of uh, lightning uh, the streets and, and various paths and, and squares. So we make make them in LED uh, uh, technologies. We also change the way how do we produce centralized heating. Before that, we used fuel, uh, fossil gas, uh, and that's it. Now we're uh, implementing uh, renewables. So uh, moving further, uh, uh, I can. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Okay, some something. The next, uh, the next presenter is calling me, so hopefully he's ready to present. I'm coming to my conclusions and maybe some, uh, some of my. Uh... Your time is up. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Thirty seconds more, please. Okay. Uh... No. Just make your last sentence, please. Okay. Okay. So uh, <laughs> uh, I will make the sentence without a presentation. That's all fine. Okay. So Thank I think you. that there are few takeaways, meaning we do understand at all levels of government governance, we do equally see the problem. The problem is there. The, the elephant is in the room. It's nowhere, somewhere hiding. So, and we do understand uh, as a member of a covenant of mayors, I do understand we municipalities, regions, we have to take our role in, in, in, in this dealing with the climate change and various initiatives. Not the central government alone, not the European Union alone, not just the world or United Nations alone. So meaning that uh, various practical issues are being done on the ground and municipalities really have good ideas, good, uh, uh, good projects that can be shared. And I think that Covenant of Mayors as an initiative is really putting those volunteered municipalities together to share their knowledge, to share experiences. It's really good initiative. Thank you for your time. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet. Thank you very much. Now, for um, uh, I invite uh, Mr. Uh, Davidas Kominskas, Mayor of Toruj District. I will not repeat the uh, questions to save some more time. You have about five to six minutes, please. The floor is yours, Davidas. Okay, I will maybe advocate for Dovidas because during my presentation he started phoning and I now uh, received a short message that he is not able to attend and join the, uh, our, our discussion. Will not be able to, huh? That's, that's the... Okay, Sen, you have uh, one more minute to conclude whatever you couldn't say. 
anything additional one minute then we go to turkish cases <clears throat> so uh i think that what dovidas would also uh, say that he is also uh um as being a Tor mayor of Toraga is also a, um, a member of the covenant of mayors and he's doing quite a big uh, change in the transportation system how we are working regionally uh, and uh, i didn't maybe uh, put up some recommendations uh, i see that i think that we all do understand that uh, climate change and all those things are that are going on that are you know, up, up beyond our power beyond our um, kind of responsibilities uh, most probably it's a united responsibility so but we also might see these things as uh, as having potential and uh, working together as a in the covenant of mirrors uh, i think that it brings uh, various levels of government and relevant support organizations agencies associations i think that uh, that's one of the examples that we have here today, encouraging them to join the initiative and stop up climate and energy action at the local level. So let's all keep on working on the on, on this track and, uh, and have a good uh, discussion uh, later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mindaguas. Now uh, we came to the case of Turkish municipalities. Um, I will just try to make an introduction. Uh, as we all know from the uh, World Health Organization's uh, data, 8.7 million people die each year uh, from air pollution. So this happens. And now, uh, additionally, we have 5 million people died because of uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, case. So 8.7 million people dying every year. So this is because of fossil fuel combustion, air pollution. So we had this problem. And now recently uh, we noticed that we cannot uh, go out to our houses. We need to talk through internet. So uh, this uh, living space, lovely living space, uh, we are uh, in prison in our houses. So that's, that's not good. Huh? And um, um, globally, we are trying to recover from this position and fossil fuels, uh, which are the main causes of uh, carbon dioxide emission to the atmosphere. I mean, since the cooling of the Earth is four, four billion years ago started and two billion years ago, we had photosynthesis. And since 400,000 years, we have this living space uh, provided without cost to human beings. But since 170 years, uh, last, we started to manage, uh, we managed to have the carbon dioxide levels twice from 200 to 400, uh, even the scholars are not taking. So now it's time uh, after this corona, floods, fires and everything as a result of climate change, um, United Nations and uh, with this sustainable development goals to 2030 and European Green Deal uh, is planned to take action and European Green Deal, as we know, 2050, uh, we are trying uh, to uh, recover. And uh, this, uh, uh, the problem started from the uh, local uh, cities where people started to uh, come together and started to stop the uh, constraints of nature. So uh, the problem started in the municipalities where people live together and we need to find the solution in municipalities. That's why local governments are very important uh, because where the people are interacting and that's the only space the people, like in a family, people can put their information, expectations and demands together. So this, uh, talk together, decide together and implement together. So you cannot do anything. I mean, you need also the central uh, authority to support this globally or uh, nationally, but local uh, municipalities, localities, uh, very important with the solution appearing at um, a renewable energy transition. Uh, we know that the resource is reaching everybody without cost and that, that means equity. Additionally, wherever the renewable energy sources reach, this means uh, freedom. And the third, 
you don't need to kill anybody to get you. It means peace. So equity, freedom, and peace we are talking about. And we practice globally now. It means also local employment. So, but the priority is always energy efficiency, using less energy. Uh, this solves 50% of the solution. And then 100% uh, renewable energy, but uh, based on the uh, based on the community power. This means local people uh, will decide, they will own, and uh, they will um, be informed about this. So uh, renewable energy is possible to do this, distributed generation, but the infrastructure needed to be ready. So that point, I mean, the resources available, technologies are available, and it's the cheapest, so the local authorities Whoever is the decision maker, this will be a decision maker of an apartment, they need to take and provide the conditions, so-called we can create innovations. There are about 30 innovations. Uh, uh, this is about technology and business uh, preparation and market design and additionally uh, distribution of energy to utilities. So uh, for developing sustainable energy, climate action plans. We need to bring all actors, and we know that European Union decided uh, to have, uh, in 2030, uh, cities uh, uh, to be uh, climate neuter with people for the people. So that's why local municipalities means the people and whoever they have uh, authorized to manage the city. Thank you very much. So um, after this, uh, I just wanted to make this introduction to show the importance of the um, uh, local authorities and the global initiatives to handle the problem. So we need to talk uh, locally, put our information nationally, globally, and the United Nations, where we are trying to uh, work on uh, in our universities and International Renewable Energy Agency, United Nations, to speed up this transition. And now I want to uh, give the floor to uh, Turkish uh, municipality authorities uh, who is going to benefit uh, from this uh, cooperation. And uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, similar questions uh, to both our colleagues and one after one I want to have the answer. So I want to just go uh, and speak in Turkish now. Merhaba, hoş geldiniz, Maria. Hello, welcome, uh, Miss Maria, Mr. Hasan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, let's start with uh, Miss Maria. Yeah, then we will continue with uh, Mr. Hasan. Now. I would like to ask you when did your municipality join the agreement for the municipalities quickly if you were to share your answer then I will ask Mr. Hassan just uh, let's uh, go through the questions uh, one minute at a time thank you I am Maryam Kayan I am from Istanbul uh, Metropolis municipality and I work in the nature preservation department and we have entered the covenant of mayors in 2015 and of course uh, the membership to GCOM is uh, they have talked about some responsibility to, uh, to be a member like uh, calculating our emissions and having data for our uh, climate effects and impacts and having targets is uh, the requirements and we have done all these requirements uh, in line with our membership. I think this is very important as the Metropolitan Municipality uh, with uh, our membership and with our works on these responsibilities both within the institution and both as uh, the uh, Istanbulites we have uh, we had the ability to create a vision for what we can do also we also had the ability to share our experiences and learn from international experiences and this was an advantage for us and this is very valuable to us definitely uh, that is what I can say 
Mr. Hassan, what about you? I am Hassan Sir from Bajalar Municipality, Nature Protection Department. We have entered the covenant in 2017 and if you ask our expectations, we know that we are top three municipalities in Istanbul with the most popular population. <clears throat> we have 22 kilometers square, so I, we have a very low amount of area, but we have 5% of the population of Istanbul in our area. Other than that, we have a lot of movement through our area uh, through the day, throughout the day. Our purpose is lowering the carbon emissions within our municipality and increasing our uh, work on that area, increasing the energy efficiency of our municipality. And I think you're going to ask more questions, so I'm not going to go into more detail. Uh, that's what I'm going to say for this question. Thank you. Let's go back to Miss Mariam and for Istanbul municipality, the diseases and impacts of climate change uh, because of the use of fossilized fuel. Are you following the impacts? Are you? Do you have any data about this? Of course, Bajilar will have uh, more detail for their own area, but you will have in general for Istanbul. I mean, in Istanbul. In 2019, when we calculated our emissions, we see that 50.8 million tons of carbon uh, dioxide has been released, and we have reported uh, and documented that, and including 2020, we have also studied that. Of course, there's a, a big air pollution problem in Istanbul, and we have action plans and goals and vision studies, and from transportation uh, and from energy investments we have a lot of different uh, projects that are continuing and the community health is also very important uh, for this issue and of course I think all of the participants uh, must know the effects on human health of these problems and I think the health ministry have numbers on the number of people affected by these uh, problems of pollution and uh, we cannot share those numbers and I think uh, the ministry can that. Uh, I said globally I think there are 8.7 million people who are dying from air pollution. They are all in Berlin to Lithuania to Istanbul. I think the rate uh, of death uh, should be the starting point if we have departments uh, focusing on these issues uh, these departments should focus on these issues and these uh, data gathering problem i think it is it should be known these not just for climate change because Mr. Hassan can maybe share if they have any information about air pollution deaths. Yes, Mr. Tanai, the diseases that are caused by fossilized fuels in, in 1992 when we were, our municipality was founded because our municipality has a lot of movement we are mostly, we were usually using solid fields instead of fossilized fields. We know in the 90s we had a lot of air pollution and for our municipality and for the metropolitan municipality we have some projects done together and we have quickly transitioned into natural gas and currently in our households uh, mostly natural gas is used and other than that in our municipality we have two uh, iron uh, manufacturing and one aluminum uh, production and um, different uh, materials uh, that were being produced in our municipality and municipalities area and we have uh, allowed them to have uh, uh, the ability to move outside of uh, the area of our municipality, I, they had a serious amount of uh, carbon emissions 
other than that textile uh, cleaning and uh, painting areas uh, producers and businesses had used coal and they also had used waste uh, fat materials uh, outside of the regulations and they were illegal uh, while using that and some of them are banned from the professions and other ones has uh, made to be used uh, filters and uh, they were made to be working within the lines of the regulations and other uh, businesses another one of the businesses that are having problems is about the carrying uh, the gathering of the plastic uh, waste and they had some uh, carbon emissions as well one of the things that we have fixed at the first we had an area that was called a uh, casting uh, area and they were doing casting work on metals and all of them have been moved out of the district in our country you also talked about a lot of effects of uh, the air pollution and you are also talked about a lot of challenges as a local government local as you said uh, metal working production areas you are also talked about the hardships that you faced about that challenges according to our regulations we are working on some specific things but we now are in the green agreement so we have to improve and update our regulations so we must uh, we might have to have such uh, an update uh, we have to study and in increase and update our things of course carbon monoxide emissions are very high in Europe usually 200 to 400 um, milligrams we had 1400 so other countries with high carbon monoxide azot oxide uh, emissions uh, can be moved to our own country uh, European commissions are trying to prevent that and they are trying to because we are also in the green deal right now we have to think about these programs and the municipalities have to think about different emissions and natural gas might not be entirely clean as well well I would like to uh, nitrogen oxide emissions we have to think about as well and Ma Miss Mary, I mean, do you have anything to add about the effects of air pollution into uh, uh, life quality of uh, people and what is the biggest challenges you are facing to lower the emissions and is there any other hardships that you face challenges you face that you were able to solve in your own municipality I think we have about eight minutes yes I would like to say that about uh, air quality we have about 26 measurement uh, stations in, re in accordance with the national and international regulations we are measuring and following the air quality both nitrogen oxides carbon monoxide carbon dioxide we are constantly measuring and also we have the Marmara airspace stations and they are also uh, measuring with other uh, stations so all the air quality all around Istanbul is controlled in 32 stations maybe our listeners will be also interested in this question as Ms. Taiva also talked about COVID-19 during the COVID-19 and we take a look at the data we can see the 40 percent increase in air quality uh, because the traffic has been eliminated and also uh, the industry has lowered the production so uh, this is a uh, proof that we can improve the air quality of course having curfews and uh, bans on businesses is a bad uh, solution of course traffic and uh, vehicles are the big pollution source having some clean transportation solutions and having new improvements in 
uh, this area for example new uh, subways having parking lots in uh, metro stations so people can park their vehicles and they can use the subway to uh, go around the city these are i think great solutions and these are going to have uh, big impacts on the air quality of course this will also lower the possible effects of climate change on istanbul as well one of the hardest things that we faced uh, is local government uh, projects <coughs> we are constantly working on infrastructures and we are trying to improve a lot of different areas like drinking water um, but in climate change is far greater than regular uh, municipality work because there are a lot of stakeholders there are a lot of big questions and big problems we have to include our citizens for every step of the way there are also very big economical and so uh, social -gil impacts so uh, the participation of the stakeholders is very important for these uh, problems so after 2015 and after our action plan in 2018 and with the green deal our goals uh, to have a nurture scene by 2050 uh, we have to have our uh, stakeholders organize them and communicate uh, with them and how can we create these mechanisms how can we uh, share the responsibility how can we manage these things uh, I, mean, I think these were the critical problems and i think we are uh, going in a well manner i think we are experienced now we are a lot more experienced and we are ready for it right now having measurements are very important of course but what standards are we using <clears throat> to compare these results which we our standards <clears throat> should be in the same line with European countries not not about you just for our limits and for our standards we should base our regulations they are the Europe is improving and updating their regulations for with new goals and new standards we should also update and improve our regulation Mr. Hassan, let's continue with you. You talked about these problems as well. And for your projects with this SECA project and European Union cooperations for your own municipality, I will also ask this to the Metropolitan Municipality. <clears throat> what kind of improvements you will be able to achieve by participating in this project? Also, this uh, is a support uh, that is <clears throat> coming from the European Union, but have our municipalities prepared to be able to use these uh, supports and uh, for transition to renewable energy? What are your plans? Uh, just uh, one and a half minutes, maybe, if you can quickly answer. Let's start with Mr. Hassan, then we will continue with Mr. Merman. As I've said, <clears throat> also related to the last questions I am going to answer this thank you we are in a very important transport area and the traffic is a very serious congestion is very serious in our area and our current building stock inventory is a problem so <clears throat> the city development has to be applied and city planning has to be improved i think 30 percent of the energy is lost to heat because <clears throat> necessary product uh, structural improvements have not been made because buildings are very old <clears throat> to create uh, this improvement we have to have new plans and we have to create the legion that uh, has to work in this area the businesses uh, cannot uh, create in more emissions in our area right now I, I think it is not easy about thousand to two thousand people are working in these areas with their stakeholders these 
companies are employing about maybe 5,000 people in the ecosystem. You have to move these outside of the city, but this is economically affecting a lot of people. There are a lot of stakeholders, so managing these problems is are very hard. So also there are publicly owned green areas, green spaces, <clears throat> to prevent uh, more buildings to be built on these areas, our mayor is applying a different <clears throat> solutions and they are turning these areas in a cultural importance. They, tur they are turning it to uh, a nostalgic uh, parks and they are giving them themes. They are giving them themes like 70s and 80s themed and they are also planting trees grape trees, creating uh, walnut trees so that there will not be any building <clears throat> implementation on this area so that they will not be able to turn that area into a building uh, space. We have created uh, green spaces for that and also for the uh, climate change first of all our uh, climate change action plan uh, goal is improving the usage of renewable energies and improving the sustainability of our systems and get generating projects for this purpose. Miss Maria, we have two minutes. Uh, let's uh, use it uh, quickly and if you can answer as well. Okay, thank you. As I've said at first as well, in Istanbul, the greenhouse gases in 2019 was about 50.9. When we take a look at the industries, you can see the 68% of this is about the energy industry. Of course, our project uh, has to have uh, have to take a look at the energy industry in a bigger manner. That's why preparing SECAP was very important because this uh, percentage of the energy sector is very imp uh, important and we have to lower this number and we have to transition this into renewables and um, <clears throat> of course we can uh, we are <clears throat> saying that we are going to improve our uh, renewable source to 18% until 2024, but I think with our own project, we are trying to improve the goals and improve our renewable energy resources and usage. Hopefully, this will be possible. Other than that, what kind of projects we are we doing in uh, SECAP is, of course, after our meetings, we have created a theme. Uh, we have also coordinated this uh, as the Department of Nature Protection and we have created our vision and we have the action plan ready so we have a lot of data and at hand so from this point on we are going to have to start working with our groups as well and that's uh, all I have to say thank you very much this is great and we are continuing to prepare and um, this is a sport uh, coming from our stakeholders. We have to uh, learn from Europe's uh, experiences and we have to prepare our cities in accordance with these data. Thank you very much for your uh, efforts and thank you very much for joining us. I think after this in the program we have a video uh, we are going to show. Right now, we're facing a man-made disaster of global scale, our greatest threat in thousands of years, climate change. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world 
is on the horizon. The world's people have spoken. Their message is clear. Time is running out. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now is 50% higher than it was in 1900. And not only are we piling in more and more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but we are chopping down the forests of the earth at a great rate. And the forests themselves are the most efficient consumers of carbon dioxide that there are on Earth. We're going to destroy the ground because the soil of a rainforest isn't very good. We are actually tampering with the climate of the Earth and with the very atmosphere that we breathe. When we talk about the disappearance of the ozone layer, we don't know what will happen when the ozone layer goes. The world has become so fragile that we cannot subject the Earth to the tortures we can now inflict upon it. When we talk about the greenhouse effect, we're talking about something that affects the entire Earth. And these problems are life and death problems. They go to the root of the viability of the planet itself. if there's one thing that it is biologically certain about the human species is that it is a human species, one species. If we don't stop the destruction of our natural world, nothing else will matter. Simply put, if we don't protect nature, we can't protect ourselves. solve a problem is by a human solution. Never can we sit back and wait for miracles to save us. Miracles don't happen. Sweat happens. Efforts happens. Thought happens. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Taiwa. Uh, uh, uh, for this nice uh, pres uh, video. As, as we see um, from the video, we can drive a conclusion that uh, human beings need to do everything in harmony with nature, take into considerations of the nature. This is not an offer to the nature. This must, uh, we must do it to survive in this global uh, living space uh, we have. So uh, there are uh, one friend is asking questions, but I don't think we now have time to answer no further questions at the moment. So um, uh, thank you very much for participation of all of you. And I give the word to Ms. Daiwa uh, to make the conclusion of this uh, workshop. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see what left 20 seconds <laughs> for, for our workshop. I very thanks for all speakers, for all participants. It was a huge pleasure to talk with you today. I think that we have a very good beginning and we will have great uh, process uh, development in the future. Thank you, dear professor, for your great moderation, for your time, and we will be very happy to cooperate and work together. Thanks, uh, dear Lydia, dear Vaida, Mindugas, and thanks but all participating here today. And thanks technical staff and also translators that supported uh, uh, us, us in this uh, meeting. Thank you very much. And thanks also Marmara Municipalities Union and uh, all the participants uh, to them. Thank you very much. Yes, Laila. I think they said they will finish the meeting, but yes. maybe it's finished already. I would like to know. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Indeed, it was okay. very nice. And we on all, oh, Professor, you are so professional on time, like 20 seconds, I see. Yes. <laughs>